was never the kind of place someone would build a town. Fittingly, the Var living here aren't known for welcoming visitors with open arms. Okay, so now the worm toe. So we made it with four supplies. That pisses me off. The Var will find you before you see them. Not surprising with this many people behind you. With weapons drawn, they demand to know why you're here. But back down when Ivor tells him he's come to see someone named Krumer. Well, I'll be damned. Krumer, it's been a long time. Yeah, it has. So what brings Yigmir to Wormtoe with his very own village of humans? Bad news. Dreads are coming down from the north. We barely made it this far. That is dire news. Come on, we have food. Woohoo! We'll miss more in the meat house. We'll discuss more in the meat house. As you follow the old Varl into the meager town, you catch him quietly saying, if it were anyone else. What, they kill us? I talk with the warriors here. I'll be honest with you. I have to want to go north and find out what happened to Blotzbucker. Some think we should go to Grafheim instead. I don't think we should go to Grafheim. None of them are happy you're here. What do you think? If I had my way, I'll stay here and let the dredge come. But you made this problem, didn't you? We can't feed this many people for long, even if they don't eat much. This is a viral town. Most of us take care of ourselves. We got women, children. We can pitch in, make this place livable. It doesn't look like that. The viral are here to get away from civilization, not make one. It's Krumer's call. It won't be long before the dredge are here, too. No, it won't. There's one thing we should do is tell Jundar what's going on. Who's Jundar? Jurunder. The viral king. Well, as close as one as we have. The Vignar. Where do you find these people? Stay here and rest. But once yours are ready to go, we do. I'm going to see off those who want to head north. But I'll join you to Grafheim. Yay, we're getting our fighter. More travel? No, we've already come so far. Stop the pouting, girlie. Even if Jerunder won't listen to a tired old varl like me, I have a feeling they'll pay attention to your friend Yvignar here. How the heck do you say that? Listen to Ivor? Ha, he hasn't told you. Of course he hasn't. Do what you need to, but don't be long. Now let's see what the exchange rate is here. Uh, save it. it seems like you push to escape it saves I don't know what save, when it saves on its own 1 to 4 oh, man uh, what do we have here what's different leather flask it takes either a brave man or a stupid man to stop for a drink and miss the battle but those who do swear by it plus one will on rest a gleaming gemstone that seems to drive enemies into a frothing rage for no clear reason. Plus two growling, drawing aggro. Five dodge strength attacks. Powder crushed from unusual rocks of the North Philian wastes are often used to paint shields, adding to your strength. That's interesting, but they're all too high level for me. That silver locket reveals a tuft of white fur that must have been precious to his owner. This unusual carved stone is warm to touch, and owing it fills you with steely resolve, plus three willpower. Now, I got three days worth, and it's one to four. That's a pretty good exchange rate. Well, I mean, it's four times what we had before. So, see how much we can get. Can we get all of it? Okay, let's just take all they got. We got 16 days worth. That should be enough that we can actually do some things on our journey and not have to worry about food constantly and not have people starving to death. Because what just in that little journey we had there, we stayed a day to help a girl who was freezing. And we could have stayed a day and we got more renown if um, we had a few more supplies. I didn't stay because... I thought we'd run out, and then we got four more. <laughs> so, I think it's worth it. 
to just go all out so we don't have to worry about it. Okay. Now let's talk to these blokes and then I think we'll call it a day. Oh, I want to see what a gruffier and stuff is first. Gruffinier? I mean, the things we got, got that oil we got at the Godstone. Just take it easy for a while. People are noticing. Oh, they notice, have they? We're on the edge of dying daily and you want me to take it easy. Gods, I should be plowing twice as many fields. You understand? Don't get us thrown out of this caravan, Mogan. It's not just you who suffers. Right. So, who you get married? I have kids? Now I'm supposed to settle down too? Yeah? What happened to? The two brothers clam up as you approach. But yeah, I wonder what that conversation was about, boys. That's right. They're like two like delinquent kids and he's the dad. Or the teacher or something. I got a kid to take care of. Cool your head, Mogan. Hogan departs with Mogan looking awkward. Oh, we got a scar. The other guy doesn't. Rook, what brings you around? Uh, just heard yelling. Came to check it out. You come running every time you hear yelling? Must be why you look so tired. Look, it's no secret. It's not secret. I like women, Rook. They're, they like me. They like the scar. Yeah. The brother doesn't have one. <laughs> Fah, forget it. Listen, all this, all this death. Every night after caravan cries itself to sleep. Pathetic. Come on, Rook, be honest. This is good living. Half the world just tilling soil till they keel over. What kind of life is that? We're lucky you could go your old life with no goals, no purpose, nothing to fight against but boredom and hunger. I'm glad for all of this. I'm, I get what you're saying, I guess. Look at it like this. We're fighting to a death almost every day, yeah? You can curl up in a ball of fear, you can hide in the woods eating nuts and appreciating leaves or some nonsense. Or you can enjoy the struggle. You know which one I pick. Anyway, just so you know, I never go for a let, promise. I promise you that, or I'll leave, all yours. Hey, eh? I'll leave it all mine? Yeah, stay away from a let. Why, why I gotta, why I gotta, why I gotta. <laughs> Appreciate it, Bogan. You depart, I'm sure with your opinion of Mogan change for the better or worse. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'm not sure of the change for the better or worse. I could go talk to him, but I think we're running out of time. Uh, yeah, let's go see what he got to say. Kumar, can you spare a moment? Mostly no, but I'll try. I never had a moment to thank you for your hospitality. Consider it done, then. What do you ask? How did you get all these vows to follow you? Respect, young one. After the Second Great War, there wasn't much for me left to do, so I started training other vows to fight. Got tired of that, made a place in Wormtail. They call me some... They still come calling, even with no wars to speak of. Seemed like, seemed like that might be changing, though, don't it? So who is Yvignar? Yvignar! Yvignar! Ha! I'm not surprised he, ever, he never told you. That's too many cops together, I can't say it. I'm just surprised you can stand being around anyone at all. Your friend was one of us long ago, I mean, the dredge bashing type. He was called Yvignar then. Look, four cops. Oh, I guess why he's not. But you get the idea. <laughs> and if you want to know why he changed his name, just ask him yourself. I'm too old to peddle and gossip. I bet you have some incredible stories. I might, I might. Or I could be the most boring vow you ever met. Depends on how much you like killing dredge. Ask me again someday. Might tell you about the time we filled a dead yacht with whale teeth. What? You filled, filled a dead yacht with whale teeth. Why? And what? Oh! <laughs> hey, wisdom on fighting dredge? Depends on what you know. They are all armor. Tap them hard enough, though, and it'll shatter. Line up an old roll of slag, and they'll explode on each other. All the way down. 
you get in a big brawl after your time is spent setting them up for it. And if you see one bang his axe like a tuning fork, try to kill them quick. Sometimes the slag he's calling won't even show up. So that means when he takes the... Start rubbing it between his hands? I've seen them do that a couple of times. I didn't let them finish it, though. I best leave you to your business. I suppose you should. Take care, friend of me. Sounds like the nerd from <laughs> Simpsons. I need mine and. Now we'll see what we got from the oil that we got. Is this it? Yep, yeah, this is it. Gull and Fry. Said to be a gift from the god Randomir. Covering one's weapon in this rare oil makes it burn like the surface of the sun. Wow. Plus 15 chance, two times strength damage. Ooh. So I should give this to a heavy hitter. So give it to him, I suppose. Heavy hitter. So these are, uh, ooh, Kumar. Hey, hey, hey. They're not many Vrow older than Kumar, and yet many of who have had much experience fighting the dredge. In Wormtoe, eager fighters could regularly come to him to learn his secrets. I the my screen is a little tad bit far away from me. And that font is a little bit hard to read. Alrighty, so the last couple of seconds didn't get recorded for some reason. I noticed my uh I think DX Tori crashed. And but all I really did was I made my uh, guys rest for some reason. I mean, my I made my guys rest to put them back to normal morale because they had weak morale. And for some reason, these buildings are glowing. I don't know why. Anyhow, uh, let's head out. I don't want to put us rest again, but we still have 14 supplies. Let's leave. And now we got all these Varro in tow. So now we actually do have Varro. More than one. Grafline is quite a few days out, says Kumar. But nothing's worse than crossing the waste. I imagine if there's anywhere you might be safe from dredge, it's there. You steal yourself for another long march and half the town of Wormtoe joins you. Well, we already know Grafheim isn't a safe place because we saw it burning. 62 fire out. Ooh, 20 supplies. So, it was a good idea to rest those two days because we got them back right away. And now we're back to weak morale already. A well-tended farm with plenty of livestock draws the caravan's attention. Upon your arrival, the farmer and his workers stand defensively within plain sight. Crude weapons at the ready. Their crossed arms make their thoughts clear without a word. Okay, offer some kind of trade for the livestock. Intimidate a farmer and keep giving you livestock. Come with us, it's not safe here. Okay, let's try that. Come with us, it's not safe here. You warn the farmer of the approaching dredge, but the man spits and says, This land is my life. I lose that, may as well be dead. The fireman slowly nod their agreement near joining you near or lowering their weapons. Uh, damn it. I want to try to make a trade. <laughs> okay, threaten the farmer. Your warriors step forward, unsheathing weapons and practically growling. The farmer's men blanch and step aside as you choose the hardiest beast. The farmer has a sense to say nothing, though the expression on his face stays with you for quite a while. Even after you are away, you catch a glance of a lit who stares at her feet and does not make eye contact with you. Well, <laughs> we made her hate you. <laughs> yes! Perfect. That didn't do anything for our morale, though. And once again, I never know when to make camp. Should I be making camp right now, or? Oh, God. Poor morale. So is there anything coming up? Several women are talking express expressively at the young girl found nearly frozen to death, now called Ak Frasta. Frasta? The quiet child's face expression quiet... A quiet child's face expresses quiet terror, aggressively jabbing at the dirt with a stick with, with which he clearly used to draw on the ground. Okay, we don't need 
panic, keep her from making a scene. Study, try to talk to a Akfrasta, or study her drawing. The markings are somewhat intricate. The square and circle could be wagons, including the depiction of yachts in front. A line from the yacht leads to deeper gouges where Akfasta stabs a stick repeatedly. But depending on how you look at it, though, it could be almost anything. Try to talk to her. You're, you're safe, Akfasta, you say, looking into the girl's blue eyes. She calms a bit before stepping towards you. Using her stick to point at the deep gouges in the ground she previously made, she whispers, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Edidj, Edidj. It doesn't mean anything to you, but you feel like you connected with her a bit. All right, that's interesting. Okay. Hopefully we don't get in a fight anytime soon with our weak, poor morale. What's this? Is this a camp or something? Looks like... Well, I guess it's nothing. Oh, it is something. Okay, that's good. Oh, it's one of these. Godstones. Okay. So, is it probably a good idea to stay a day here? Get our morale up at least to a weak morale. Oh, is it weak right now? Or is it poor? Poor. Yeah, get up to weak. Come on. The Godstones of Merit looms into view. Upon it is carved a great ocean beast. Jagged stones jut out of the snow like shark fins. It's hard to imagine North Felling Waste being filled with water at one time, but the Godstone stands as the remainder of the vast lake he used to look across. Okay. A blessing, shouts one of the men in the car your caravan, holding up what looks like a silver coin. It's a fish scale, he says, pointing out the rainbow pattern that shows in the sunlight. Soon a curious child has found another hiding in the snow, and then a third is discovered. Perhaps they'll bring us good luck, you'll rear, and before long the caravan has become obsessed with gathering the shining scales. Uh, let the caravan take their time. By the end of the second day, the scavenger's hunt still continues unbated. Even you are starting to feel somewhat in the something in the back of your mind, like you need to add one of the scales. You shake it off, certain when there's, eh, uncertain whether to let this continue. Okay, get the caravan out of there. Two days is enough, man. You start to wonder if something unnatural is old on their minds when the call to leave is met with open aggression. Ivor helps you get them moving again, and you wonder how long they would have kept searching if you let them. Oh, wow, that was interesting. Welcome to Dingrit Austin. We're two days and still? Okay. Godstone Merrick. I just got an achievement. I'm not sure if this shows up. Seems like sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And we're back. On the trail. It's quite a steep trail. Oddly calls you over grinning. A row of women holding bows of differing ages, age and experience line up before a row of trees in the distance. They fire, doing an impressive job hitting the trunks. I think they're ready to fill some dredge with feathers. One woman still hasn't shot her arrow. She stands perfectly still. The others watch just as the wind shifts, she lets go. And her arrow flies not into one of the trees, but a snow rabbit. That has scurried out from underneath. Dinner, she says, smiling. A group of men from the caravan approach. Listen here, says one. Practice all you want. My wife isn't fighting dredge. The other men are agree in course. We don't want to see a battlefield full of dead wives and daughters. Uh, stand by the women coming fighters. The men argue that their point, but eventually relent. Thanks, says Ollie's. To be honest, it was harder than I expected. But the more people who hold their own, the better. The women return to camp, not just as clansmen, but as fighters. Hey, we got some more fighters. Plus 25 fighters, minus 35 clansmen. Okay. The sound of skirmish alerts you to a viral surrounded by half dozen armed fighters. Seemed like I had this one before. Armed fighters. One man spots you and shouts, Leave us to our business. This viral killed my father without reason. The viral is about to spawn when a man attacks. The giant swats the blade aside and silently watches for the next assault. Let us hear what the viral has to say. Return to caravan. Yeah, why not? The viral shrugs as if kind of concerned, saying, This one's father and I had a business deal. He lied. Now he's dead. Lies, shouts the man. You murdered him over a lie, you coward. The men wildly attack the viral and deflects them well enough, but you're uncertain how I can keep it up. 
Yeah, we'll was, was probably get them in our party if we defend them, so why not? I very say, we could use any Varl with a good sword arm, couldn't we? He nods, reading his weapon. The men immediately back off, this prospect of fighting your entire army suddenly unappealing. They watch from a distance, shouting obscenities and something about injustice. The Varl torn, turns towards you. Didn't need to help, but if I'm going to travel, it may as well be in company of other Varl. He falls in line with the others, and you return to travel. Okay. Yay, one more vow. Hey, some renown. Awesome. Hey, weak morale now. <laughs> 76. Poor morale. Okay. You hear a whistle on the wind and spot a long line of varrow up ahead, heading towards you. Behind them is a swarm of dredge and a trail of bodies leading off in the distance. Get down there, Bark Schumer. Eh? What? Don't let... Hey! Don't let them spread out, shouts the lead Varl as you approach the battleground. Soon you almost regret finding yourself fighting amongst them, facing off against a daunting number of dredge. Ooh. Dredge lined the battlefield, weapons drawn. A fight seems inevitable. Yeah, I can't say the word today. Inevitable. You take a quick hit count. There must be at least 129 of them. You have 96 fighters and 63 Varl at your side, so we thoroughly outnumber them. Uh, let's see. So there's going to be a choice again? Yeah. The two forces are about evenly matched. There is no guarantee of victory here, so definitely formations. You start comparing weaknesses and strengths, taking into account terrain, morale, and the look of your enemy. If you're careful, you should be able to keep your forces balanced. Give the order. You start rallying your forces and gather your allies to you, preparing to enter the fray. Hey, hey we got him back. Fasalt. Uh, I can't remember what Fasalt is. Fasalt is a provoker. Okay, so I have a choice between a provoker, a war leader, or Ivor. Fasalt is level 3. I'd rather have him than Egil. Mm, this looks pretty good. Ooh, he's level 3, so I can give him this. Okay, that's good. I kind of want to put Kumar in there, but I don't know. Oh, did he not take it? Oh, okay. Why didn't it take it the first time? Hopefully, you let me get that back. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's do it. So, fighting more dredge. I like the last battle over in. We're fighting some. I was going to say, why is it zoomed out so far? Oh, I can zoom out? I didn't know that. About time I figured that out. <laughs> uh, why are you over there? Okay. I want to kill this arsehole pretty quickly. Let's put him over here. Yeah, why not? This looks pretty good. Wait a minute. Are they going to be in range? I can't see. I can't. Come on. Okay. I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't click on them. Or her. Or a second there. But they'll be in range soon enough. Let's put her over closer to Ivor. I mean Rook. Not that close. And let's put her here somewhere. That are we on? You got one, two, three, four, five, six. What's this guy? Okay. Adjacent dredge also take damage when you hit for three arms damage or more. A shield slam causes knockback. Okay. I didn't know you could do this. A scourge uses weapon to summon an ally to the battlefield. Okay, that must be when he spins his axe. Showerstone. Two bombs are thrown, each causing two strength damage. Okay. Let's do this. Let's get him up there. And then let's use... Battering Ram. Oh, I thought he had to bring the pain. Okay, fine. 
we'll smash him then. I'm okay with that. Why did you go back there? He's a provoker. What is prov malice? Cause him to attack you on the next turn. Okay. That's interesting. Well, I don't I don't know if I really want to do that. Let's just attack him. And knock down his strength a good deal. Oh shoot. Because we had poor morale. That's not good. I'm used to having high morale. Ah, yeah, you guys got hit. Why are you running away from me? And let's give him some juice. Yeah, come this way. Come that way. That's perfect. No, 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 no. I can't quite hit him. But if I move there, I can't. There I can, but I don't want to be in range of him either. Okay, let's move him over here. Yep. That's exactly what I want to do. I can't see. Five. That would be perfect. Let's, let's give him six. Make him useless. And make him easy to take out. Ah, yeah. that's a, That was a pretty good strategy, actually. Because... The forces them to go through those guys. And now he's dead. What are they doing? Is there an AI broke or something? And no, I gotta shoot through him, so that's no good. I need to be a little bit closer as well. Let's do this. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Ow. They keep hitting each other. Let's go here. I, yeah, yeah, what's that? Oh, shoot. I don't think that was actually what I wanted to do, but... Hit him for nine... This is going pretty well. Ooh, my Archie. Hey, watch out for Mr. Archie. Uh. Ah, uh, poop. I just might leave him here, actually. Because I can't hit anyone from here. I guess I'll have him rest. Okay. Ooh, I could do 10 damage to him. Oh, because his, his elf is all gone. And down he goes. Okay. Now these guys come in. That was kind of interesting. I didn't expect that to work like that. I don't know when his health got down so low. I can't move. Ow! Can I not? Oh, okay. It's not far enough. Can I attack anyone? No. Fine, rest then. Oh, I can move a let in them. Can I still hit him? He's gonna hit like absolute tank. No, I can't hit anyone from there. Okay, good. Good, he went over that way. Oh, there was a lucky break. Let's start getting this guy down the size. 
Ha! You get your own guy too, dumbass. He hits like a tank. Ow. That guy's no slouch. Yeah, bloody flail. Let's hit this guy for another five, six, so he's dead. Yeah, I'm really curious what these guys are up to, just walking around, running around before. It was interesting. Uh, oh, I can't reach him? So I have to move to hit someone, do I? I don't want to go up there because I'll block him. Let's go here. Uh, what do our special do again? Rain of arrows. Tap one tile, one arrow causing strength damage walked over before next turn. Now let's just take it. This guy. Ooh, three, four. I remember these guys don't have much morale. Ow. So Ivor can't be doing... Oh, he's not... He's not doing great, but he's not doing bad. Mm, no. I should check that first. If I could line that up, I could have got all three... Is there three guys there? Two guys there. All two of those guys. Let's knock down his armor some more. I really love the animations for these guys. Ooh! Ow! Oh, man! Uh, I'm, I want to hit him. Yes, I do want to hit him for eight. Ooh! I gotta get him in there somehow. Okay. No, that's pointless. I wouldn't even kill him, and I had a chance of missing the hit. Okay. Uh, I can't click on him. Oh, be quiet. Uh, let's use bloody f f flail if I could click on the guy. Oh, there we go. Oh, he's going to go down. Uh, unfortunately, though, we're out of time. We'll have to continue this battle in the next one. Uh... So thank you for watching. If you have any tips or tricks that you want to mention, don't ruin anything. I obviously haven't finished the game yet, but I'm all ears or just any comments or whatever. Leave it in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer. And I hope you catch me in the next one. Goodbye.